And now in our second and final segment of the program this morning, we're going to discuss the growing concerns by Sierra Leoneans in Lebanon who are facing challenges owing to Israel's attack on Lebanon. And what's the Sierra Leone embassy in Iran covering Lebanon are doing? In the studios this morning, we do have Alfonso Bani, who is the Executive Secretary of Human Rights Defenders Network. Bani, it's a pleasure having you as always in the studios. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay. And also on Zoom, we do have Elizabeth Blango Campbell, who is Sierra Leone's information, I beg your pardon, attache um, to the Embassy of Iran, who is also covering Lebanon. She will soon join us. Via Zoom to give us updates as to what's happening there. I mean, government's reaction to same. Um, Bani, how serious is um, how serious are the concerns at this particular moment, owing to what's currently happening in Lebanon? Well, <coughs> the concerns of Sierra Leone are very serious, and uh, I think it's also legitimate. Uh, we we only need to see the the reaction of government or how government will step up their response to the situation of. Uh, uh, our colleagues that are trapped in, in Lebanon uh, because the, as a nation, uh, as a country, the government has a responsibility uh, for the mere fact that uh, in, uh, in our constitution, uh, under chapter 3, section 18, it speaks about freedom of movement. They give the rights to people to, to move freely and to reside anywhere or any part or even to leave out, to leave the country, to go en anywhere. And uh, Section 20 also talks about the protection from inhumane treatment or degrading treatment of every citizen. So anywhere a citizen finds him or herself, the government has a responsibility to fulfill that aspect of the constitution. So they, they deserve the protection that they, 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 they needed at this particular point in time. So we are waiting to see how the government will step up their response to the need of those citizens. because. If you look at, you, you will tend to ask why people move in from Syria to Lebanon. What is there in Lebanon? And probably there are several factors that uh, uh, make people to leave their home country to go to other countries, even for hard jobs, because they cannot withstand the economic situation or the challenges they face in their home country. So sometimes they, f they are forced to go out either as migrant workers or going to seek asylum or trying to, f to find other areas for greener pastures. So the government equally has a responsibility, A, to protect them while they are there, and, and B, to see how they can also create more facilities and opportunities for citizens not to attempt going out of the country to those areas that we seem to be very dangerous for their existence. These concerns have been out for almost two weeks, or if not more. Um, we've seen them on social media, and the devastation <coughs> in Lebanon seemed very huge. It seemed very, very huge. Um, would you say government has been reactive rather than being proactive on the concerns from those who are trapped there at the moment? I mean, Salonians, whom you've already said, it's the responsibility of government to ensure that even though they are outside Salon, but for the mere fact they carry the green, white, and blue passport, they are also part of Salon. Yeah, well. I will say the government is reactive, and uh, but I'm not, I, will, I will also not. Uh, I will not. I'm not tend to, to to suggest that I'm trying to defend the government. But considering the 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 state of this country and uh, the opportunities we have as a nation, uh, it will be very challenging for the government to be to be proactive in those early times. We don't have people that can do even analysis or even tracking names of citizens that are in every part of the world. Uh, and so it, 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 it gives uh, a, a lot of gap for the government to be proactive to respond to needs of citizens. Some of, some of them are there without the, 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 even the, the, the knowledge of government. And so and some, the government don't even have a, a, a data tracking the, you know, the, 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 the movement of citizens. So it creates a whole vacuum or a gap for the government itself and i think the government need to step up to see how they can you know build their 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 data system in uh, you know trying to access everywhere citizens are to show concerns if they are really trying to protect citizens of this country well, well now on zoom um we do have elizabeth blango campbell who is the information person the information attache 
who is um, attached, um, you know, she's based in Iran, and they are similarly so covered in um, Lebanon. Elizabeth, are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon for my end. I know, I know. Um, so Elizabeth, on, help us understand what's happening from your end, I mean, in terms of government's um, you know, reaction to the uh, Syrian and so currently in Lebanon. Okay, thanks for having me, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk um, on the situation of Sierra Leonean in Lebanon. Um, let me first and foremost um, talk about the activities that have been going on during these years, you know, the past years. You know, um, the ambassador of Iran officially opened um, the consulate in Lebanon in 2020, December 2020, you know, when he presented his credentials to the president. You know, this building has um, served as the official building you know, of the government of Sierra Leone in Beirut, Lebanon, to assist and protect citizens in of Sierra Leone in Beirut, you know, and uh, to protect citizens, like I said, and to coordinate between the two countries. And this has been the the, the, the dreams of President Zio to ensure that um, there is a consulate in Lebanon that will provide service for residents or traveling nationals from Sierra Leone. And I want to quickly use this medium to announce the passing of the, the honorary consul, Sierra Leone, Lebanon, Mr. Hashim Hashim, who passed away two weeks ago. Um, after a long illness, on behalf of His Excellency, the President, and staff of Tehran, and the government of Sierra Leone, we want to extend our heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family. We say, Osh, as our thoughts and prayers are with them in this difficult time. May the gentle soul of Mr. Hashim rest in peace. Coming to your question, since this, the inception of Israel and Lebanon conflicts, you know, and following the death of the honorary consul in Beirut, the embassy in Iran has been in constant communication with the assistant to the late honorary consul by the name of um, Mr. Jawad. Yes, he's there, he's a Sierra Leonean national. He's presently, presently manning our Sierra Leone consulate in Lebanon. And uh, according to the update he has been given the embassy, because the one that is manning the consulate in Lebanon. He said the um, Sierra Leonean nationals who we are living in the southern Lebanon, we had Israel and Lebanon conflict was badly hit, have so far moved to Beirut, you know, which is the capital of, of um, the city, you know, and uh, the embassy has been responding swiftly, you know, since um, the war started, between Israel and Lebanon. The embassy has sent um, through our official mail um, about 100 emergency travel certificate, that is the ETC, to our consulate in Beirut, Lebanon, to support Sierra Leonean nationals who may have lost their passport, you know, during this current situation, and maybe we warrant um, repatriation or evacuation. So as we speak, as I speak to you now, and uh, from the update I'm getting presently in Lebanon, the embassy and the consulate are now in contact with the um, international organization for migration, you know, for possible repatriation of Sierra Leoneans. Elizabeth, before we talk of the how swift the response is or was. Has the embassy a statistics as to the actual number of Syrians who are residents in Lebanon? Well, actually, yes, we are, we are on that footing because since the time we established the, 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 the consulate in Lebanon, we called on Sierra Leoneans, they were part of the meeting. We told them to um, visit the embassy and register their, their self and their name so that we will have a database. So I can tell you that we have over 600 Sierra Leonean 
that has registered with the consulate in Lebanon and still counting. So, so it means we are yet to get to, of course, um, you know, a realistic data as to the total number of people that are residents in Lebanon. Let's talk on the, on the response. We've oh. seen several accounts on social media as it relates to what's happening in Lebanon. Is that uh, what you consider a swift response? Well, actually, we are on it because as I speak, we have over 200 Sierra Leoneans that, that are in safe space as we speak. Because, um, we, 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 like I told you, we don't have the mechanism that it takes for us to, to gather all our Sierra Leoneans together, our people together. We don't have that um, mechanism, but we are trying our best. So far, we've gathered over 200 Sierra Leoneans that are right now in safe space and they are provided with food. Elizabeth, uh, just before we let you go, mm. what's the data showing? How many Sierra Leoneans do we have? Is there any life lost? Uh, are those with injuries? Mm. We need that data. Uh, and also the repatriation plan. Is it to bring them to Sierra Leone or is the government in touch with other countries nearby that could accommodate those Sierra Leoneans temporarily? All right, as I speak, we don't have any death case, any death reported of Sierra Leonean during this conflict between um, Israel and, and um, Lebanon. We don't have any death reports of any Sierra Leonean or injuries. We are not reported up till now, as I speak. And uh, as I said, the, the airports in, in Beirut, Lebanon, is closed as we speak, but we are working together with IOM to ensure that as soon as the, the, the airport is open, they are going to repatriate Sierra Leoneans what back should country. Sa what should Sierra Leoneans expect at this moment from the embassy? In as much as it, seem very, it's, 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 it seems like the embassy is a bit handicapped to adequately handle the affairs of I mean, our, count, uh, you know, our, our counterparts, our compatriots in, in, in Lebanon. What should we expect at this moment, Elizabeth? Well, we want to assure them. We are, we are going to, we are assuring them that government is, is on top situation and we are sure that, we are going to ensure them that they are going to repatriate them from that place. Had it not been for the close of the, the embassy, most of Sierra Leone who have will have come back to Sierra Leone. But we are hoping that the government of Lebanon will open the, the airport for people to, to return back to their various country. These are the um, um, assurance that I'm going to give um, Sierra Leoneans in Lebanon and their um, people in Sierra Leone to less assured. Government is in charge and is on top situation and we will ensure that no life lost and we repatriate them back to their country. Elizabeth, finally, to those in Sierra Leone who have friends and loved ones in Lebanon who are in touch with them, who have not been able to contact uh, the help side from Sierra Leone, how can they get help through the embassy? Well, actually, we, we have the, the, this assistant, uh, Mr. Jawadu is there, he has all the contacts. As soon as they, 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 they called him, they will get on to us, and then we will we our, our numbers, our contacts are all there. Whenever one want to meet with us, they are OK. We've not been isolated in terms of communication. We are open. Whenever we, we have information about that, we respond to them swiftly. So you have, and we have been to doing that contact since. now, Elizabeth. Jo just share contact. Perhaps you know someone is watching and needs help for the relatives who are stranded currently in Lebanon. Is there a contact? Help us with the contact. All right, I will, I will send the contact. I will send. Um, but they, they already know the. the the country in Lebanon, and the, the man who is in charge is a well-known Sierra Leonean there because they have their own community, their Sierra Leone community there, and they know him very well. But I will send the contact, because it's not with me now, but I can give you mine. I can give you mine, so you can contact me 
and then we'll take it from there. I'll, I will be able to to give them whatever information they want from Lebanon. Um, um, thank you so very much, Elizabeth. It seems the contact is not you know it's it's not forthcoming. But nonetheless, we still yes, have. Yes, I will give um, you mine. Zero seven four. 982663. They can get on to me. Okay. Call that again, please. 074 982663. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. We still we have Alfonso Sibani in the studios. And uh, you, you've, you've listened from um, Elizabeth, who is um, based in Iran, and they are covering Lebanon. Are you so far satisfied with? the strides made by the embassy to ensure Syrians in Lebanon are safe. What? If you say, if I'm so far satisfied, uh, if I say yes, then I'll, I'll, you know, it, I will be the, it will be a disservice to my conscience. Uh, uh, the only thing, we appreciate the government response, and I know the terrain they are referring to. I was there some years back. I, I, I did uh, uh, a mission to train UN personnel because at Inter they have a big UN mission. So I know the area is very close to Israel. It's at the border between Israel and Lebanon. So I know what is going on. I know, I know that particular terrain. So it's not something strange to me. And I, I, I really f uh, I'm feeling the plight of my colleagues or our brothers and sisters that are there. And we hope that the government will really pay attention uh, what we do know is that our brothers and sisters are struggling, but what we don't know is the level of government response to their needs, and we are yet to get an appropriate and clear, uh, 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 you know, pathway as to how the government will respond to the needs of our brothers and sisters in Lebanon. Do you have suggestions you could share at this point as to handling the situation? The, 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 the other suggestion I think I could, I could prefer is for the government to probably open up, at least to ensure that they give, they give people updates, they keep on giving us updates as to the situation of our, our brothers and sisters in Lebanon. And uh, where appropriate, let them also make refers the, the, the embassy in, uh, is it in Iran, right? Or in, uh, in, Iran. in Iran can also give, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, memos or orders to other counterpart embassies as to how they can also accommodate some of our brothers and sisters as and when they contact them so that they can easily reach out to them and see how they can coordinate. Because in most of this situation, you have to rely on other counterpart embassies or uh, 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 consuls to see how you can coordinate because we don't have the facility, we don't have the system and processes. It's very challenging. So they rely on other people that are specialized in that. And so they have to communicate to the city, not only giving the information or on telephone, but also how they can also reach to other people that are very, that are close partners, that we have a very strong relationship with at the diplomatic level. All right, thank you very much an easy way to address the issues of our brothers and sisters. Time is in our favor. We just want to appreciate you for your time this morning and for those brilliant submissions in regards to um, the thorny issue that is currently confronting Syrians in Lebanon. It's a pleasure having you, Alphonsus. Thank you. Thank you.